family, thank you for joining us for another edition of Conversations with Ken Wardle and Shelly Amonset. How y'all doing out there? Today our guest is Stephanie Wellens, a.k.a. Sundrop369, which is my poetic name. She dope on that mic. This <laughs> sister is dope. dope. spoken word artist. Yeah. Yes, this sister is a spoken word artist, uh, writer, um, a student, actually. Um, and she, she's done some of our, what, two, yeah, two shows, really, two of the shows, two or three of the shows. Yeah, she's been really saying a lot of open mic poetry, as well, she's been in vocal dialect. Yeah, vocal dialect, uh -huh. and, um, she has a passion for education, education, education absolutely, yeah. educating the youth, and, um, teaching them the right way in regards to the way we should be living as, as, as black people. You know what I'm saying? The way we should be living. That's the way we should be teaching our children the things and the morals and the concepts of life that we should be teaching. You know, and I, I really uh, applaud you for that. You know, because yeah, yeah. yeah. we don't have a lot of, uh, you know, it's more African centered the way you, you know, yeah. the way you, your okay. concept. Yes. You know what That's I'm right. saying? And um, so tell us how. Uh, how you became a poet? What made you become a poet? Wow, yeah, that's a deep question. So, poetry actually was something that I actually like rediscovered for myself at the end of October. Um, fortunately, um, I had a really good friend of mine who himself is a um, he's a poet and really good with the music. And through our many conversations, you know, he would just find himself kind of speaking poetry and you know doing a lot of his own personal creative expression. I think just with time. Um, that began to just kind of bring out that creative expression in me. And um, it all started on, um, I want to say October 22nd, I was in one of my classes. Um, I'm a grad student, PhD in sociology, full time. Yeah. And I was in one of my racist classes. Um, not a class about racism, but a class that is racist. Um, very much. Oh, this just in October, at the end of October. Mm -hmm. Very divided by race. Um, what school you went to? Georgia State University. Mm. Oh, GSU? Yeah, oh, okay. certainly, certainly. Mm. Um, was oh, in one okay. of my racist class, and I was just so fed up. And um, what I began to do is I pulled out a piece of paper, and I just started writing what I felt. And it was all centered on American education, and it was my critique of it. Mm -hmm. oh, and, so, how long have you been doing poetry? Since the end of October. Wow. Uh, I mean, you, it, it don't sound, you don't I mean, sound I, like that. <laughs> yeah. I would never, I mean, by you being on the bike. You are so, you so time. skilled at it. You are very, yes, very, I mean, very talented. You've been doing it for a while. I didn't know you just started. I, okay. I wrote my first piece in that class. Okay. And then just shortly thereafter, I was at Say It Loud. And that's where I presented that piece. Um, okay, cool. But it just, um, it was something that I needed because for a while I had struggled a lot with being able to express um, freely and confidently and boldly. Mm -hmm. And I think I just got to a point where, you know what, I was like, this is how I feel. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that I want to say, and this is how I want to express. And I felt that poetry allowed me to be yeah. creative and rhythmic in my words. Mm -hmm. And also being able to rouse the spirits of those who I was performing mm -hmm. for. Yeah, because uh, you do on the, on the mic. Yeah, and, yeah. and you can actually yeah, feel yeah. it. You can feel it. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's definitely a, a good quality in a poet. When the audience can feel what you're speaking about, can actually, you know, it like oh. touches, you know, it, 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 I mean, it touched to hear you was like, wow, she's yeah, that's why. I, I, I just <laughs> she is good. I think <laughs> one of the poetry, poetry poems that you did at um, Say It Loud, it was so deep. Yeah. I think I might have cried or something. Yeah, it I wonder so if it was the deep. American Education. So, yeah, I really yeah, it was the one where you got like super emotional. That's it. You know what That's I'm saying? That's it. That was the and first was, piece. Every single thing you said in that in that poem was true and accurate. Yeah. It was so accurate, and you broke it all the way down, like <laughs> in layman's terms. You know what yes. I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so it was like really. I mean, I felt that. Yeah. Definitely. Um, For you to just be doing it since October, man. Yeah, that's that is phenomenal. Yeah, I think just, you know, my life has unfolded in education, and I've been through a lot. Um, I was the first in my family to go to college. Um, and so when I came to Georgia State as an undergrad, um, 
from 2006 to 2010, I generally had a very positive experience. And right after that, I went off immediately to graduate school at the University of Notre Dame. Okay. 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 And so I'm familiar with the Michigan area, yeah. but we were, you know, obviously that's an Indiana South Bend. And yeah. um, when I got there, I was the first black student that that department, sociology PhD department, I was the first black student that they had in six years. And out of the entire, oh, yeah. yeah Yes, like kind of like making history, it sounds like, you know, in some ways. But yeah, and while I was there, um, I was um, in the graduate program. And so among the graduate school, right, there are 23, at the time, there were 2,300 graduate students, meaning that there were 2,300 people pursuing their master's or PhD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And out of that 2,300, there were 23 black students out of all yeah. 2,300. And wow. I was one out of those 20. And fortunately, and this was, in Notre Dame. This was at no in Notre Dame. Um, I started there fall yeah. 2011. I got my master's from there um, in spring 2014. But I had been through so much in terms of racism, microaggressions, and just really um, just feeling like an outcast and like I didn't belong yeah. there. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really taking a toll on me. And so I decided to withdraw from that program and I came back home and I started teaching full time at a community college um, called Aiken Technical College. And I started doing that. That's in Aiken, South Carolina. And home for me at the time was Augusta, Georgia. And so I would commute there and start teaching, but I also faced racism there, but from a whole different perspective because now I'm a teacher, I'm in an authority position, I'm facing racism in and outside my classroom. Mm. And so education in, in, in many ways I have had a very conflictual relationship with it I definitely see the value of getting higher levels of education but recognizing that we have a system of education that is embedded within a structure of racism mm -hmm. where it privileges and benefits whites psychologically and materially at the expense of black people especially that's when a lot of like the importance of me being able to express came in but i still struggle with that and so now being back from you know teaching and being back in graduate school full time um it seems like i've, I've been able to more or less find my voice and be more um, and have more of a refined perspective on how education really plays a role in reproducing racism and so then that's just when I began to find ways on how to just creatively express and it began in one of my racist classes. And so it's just a, a, an idea of just where a lot of this comes come from for me. Um, so it's not just that one class, you know, yeah. my experience has definitely been, like it was a build up. It was a build up and I had a near death experience this past summer, um, summer 2019, uh, May 3rd, 2019. I was at a nature park where I really liked to get my healing, get grounding, get connected with all forms of life, you know, give my appreciation, just get clarity and direction and guidance. And um, I was, I had squatted down, I was on my phone, but I was just, you know, regularly squatting and I stood up and got lightheaded. Mm. And when I got lightheaded, I blacked out. And when I blacked out, um, clearly lost track of time and I woke up. And I woke up underneath the pond in that park. I woke up and there was nobody around. I wasn't with anybody. I literally woke up and my head was submerged completely underwater. I was not, if I was literally standing straight up. I don't even know how that was possible. I can't swim. So what this really showed me, and, and, and so what, somebody might be wondering, well, like, how did you get out of the water then? Well, when I realized that I was underwater, I just reached out, like in my mind, I just said, get out. And I just reached out and just ended up coming out on my feet. I didn't even have to struggle. And it was like an actual steep bank that I had to like basically walk down mm. to even get in the water. Mm. Um, and eight minutes passed that I cannot recall to this day. And I, I know just based on my meditation and reflection after that, I realized like that was the result of me not really expressing Right. And it was just so much weight on me. And it was almost like it was necessary for me to really sacrifice the version of me that a lot of those experiences over the course of my life had almost like created and formed in order for me to assume who I was designed to be in this life. Like I had to let that go. And so for me to be 
And if you think about water and like its um, symbolism for purity and yeah. rebirth and, you know, um, folks who are in Christian faith, they talk about baptism. It really so was it's like, like a breakthrough. For you. It was a breakthrough. Yeah. It was a straight uh, Though it was, you know, you could have died behind it, but, you know, it was a breakthrough. It was death and life at the same yeah. time. And I, in that awesome. moment, I knew that I was determined. In that wow. moment, I knew that nothing in this in this matrix in this system could break me. I am destined and on purpose. Absolutely, absolutely, certainly. Absolutely. And I feel like many people, you know, are in the same position in terms of also being designed for a larger, greater, divine purpose in this life. Mm -hmm. And it's just been a course since May third of me getting in tune with myself, loving myself, appreciating myself, accepting myself. And then in doing that, I began to grow confidence in my own thoughts, ideas, and expression. And so it was just really a matter of time before the poetry began to present itself. And it's just been a blessing to be around a lot of other very poetic, creative, rhythmic people who can help bring that out of me. And so the poetry, um, it like, you know, you were just saying too, like it wasn't just that one class, it was a field. And that's why, like, so the education poetry came thing. from that. It yeah. came out of all of the things that you have been experiencing yeah. and just holding on to. And then, yes, and it's been so therapeutic for me. It's been so therapeutic. Liberating, actually. Lib Ooh. You know what yes. I'm saying? It's like, yeah. you know, liber liberation is a beautiful thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I felt liberation when, I mean, you know, you can feel liberation in the smallest things or the biggest things. I felt liberation when I cut off all my hair and didn't care what people thought. <laughs> it just went natural. I'm serious. That's, no, that's, that's liberation. You know what I'm saying? Because people hold on to that hair because of vanity and stuff like that. But I knew I had to do that in order to um, cleanse myself. You know what I'm saying? I had to cleanse myself. And a lot of people go through different forms of liberation just by, I mean, something small could be something small. It could be something as big as what happened to you. You know what I'm saying? But it's beautiful it once is. it actually, once you, once you experience it. That's right. You know, because you can view things differently and you can just, you don't really care. That's right. What people think. You can just be yourself. That's you know it. what I'm saying? That's, it. That's liberation. Yeah. Yeah. You need to stop it because, you know, by the you know, if I do your poetry, I never know that you just started. So that's, that's good. Yeah, just, I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Definitely just started. It's a, like I said, you know, from that one piece, it was just flowing out of me. Like, I, there are a lot of pieces that I've written. I just, you know, need to just take the time out to recite them so I can perform them, you know, without having to necessarily read from, you know, the cell phone or what have you. But, um, you know, it was it, it, it just showed me how much I needed to pour out. Mm -hmm. And so that one piece just led to so many other pieces and it was just back to back. And my mom was like, where is this coming from? And I'm like, all the years of hurt, of pain, of anger, of frustration, of aggression, but also a vision of dream and of like, you know, just creating in my mind just a new world. Mm -hmm. And so I have, I have several pieces, pieces that are critical, pieces that deal with black children, you know, um, pieces where I'm just given appreciation, you know, for overcoming and being able to still remain strong and bold, no matter what the situation or circumstance is. And so it's been a healthy balance for me being in this PhD program. I'm currently um, studying for comprehensive exams. Comprehensive exams are really those major assessments that you have to take in the program to declare what your specialty is. Like, what is your area of focus? You know, what is the area that you're going to consider yourself kind of more or less an expert in? And having this sort of critical perspective and knowing that the vision and the insight that I that I'm, I have when it comes to reading is being guided by our ancestors, I'm really able to see way beyond just what the words are saying on the paper and in the readings and in the research that I'm reading, that I can see an agenda that is being waged against us. I can see the war that is being waged against us day to day. And that scholars are playing a role in writing this out of history literally reconstructing who we are Absolutely. to justify mm -hmm. our, our decimation, to just, justify our genocide, our destruction. Mm -hmm. And I see the role that American education plays in that. Yeah. And so I needed to be able to express, you know, the things that I was actually seeing and feeling because if I, if I hadn't done that, 
I would have another pine incident. Mm -hmm. I would have another pine You had to let that go. You had to let that go in order for you to be who you were truly meant to be. You know what I'm saying? And do what you truly were meant to do, you know? And um, you're right, the education system in regards to, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's from a European standpoint. So we actually rely on our oppressor to educate our children. You know what I'm saying? That's pretty much what we do. So, you know, and, and it's like when I didn't realize it until I became a and I started studying and I started seeing the way, you know, it's structured. It's like, okay, they have no entrepreneurship yes. classes in public school. Why not? No economic classes. Why don't they teach black children about economics? Why don't they teach black children how to go work for themselves and not work for somebody else? You know what I'm saying? So it's structured for our destruction. You know what I'm saying? So it really is. It is. Certainly, you know, um, us not, not being, um, you know, made privy or aware or exposed to our actual history. Mm -hmm. The fact that our history does not start at slavery. It doesn't. It's not to say they that. They don't even talk about it. No, certainly not. Never. Certainly not. Because mm -hmm. if you recognize that you were the ones who built the pyramids, mm -hmm. if you recognize that you were the one who introduced the calendar to the world, time, a way of structuring events to the world, if you were the one who actually introduced spirituality to the world, if you were the one who civilized the world, Imagine what that would do to your self-concept. You saying. would be able to recognize yeah, a lie so when it comes to accurate. you. Yes. And that's that the thing. So that's what they don't accurate. want you to know. They don't want you to know that. And and I'm going to tell you, they never spoke of Africa when I was in elementary school, middle school, high school. Never, ever. And, and I cannot remember any of my teachers speaking of Africa, Egypt, in Ethiopia, nothing. You know what I'm saying? And then they said, you know, they used to talk about the Mayans and the Incas. Yep. And the Aztecs, yep. but they never spoke the Asian of, empires, all yeah, of that, all know? of that. But they never spoke about black people being the, you know what I'm saying? The first R running dynasties, you know, being the first people on this planet. Period. Yes. The reason civilization exists is because of black people. Okay. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Right. We created the first civilization. We yes. civilized mm -hmm. other. People, yeah. we civilize your pants. You know what I'm saying? So it's 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 crazy that in high in in school, you know, I don't remember them ever speaking about black people being responsible for any of that. Yes, yes, and that's the difference between schooling and education, right there. Schooling is training you to be another puppet, another pawn, another pigeon in a hole their holes, their system, their matrix. Mm -hmm. And education is really about bringing about who you were designed to be. Absolutely. Creating conditions and opportunities for you to realize who you are to mm -hmm. self rediscover mm -hmm. so that you can achieve whatever your purpose is. Absolutely. That's education. And yeah. that's what I had to do. That I recognize that I'm in a schooling process. And that's mm -hmm. why I don't ever get too high and mighty over any piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Don't ever get stuck on no certification and qualification. Mm -hmm. Because that's nothing but a piece of paper. Piece of paper. Don't let that define you. Mm -hmm. what, def what, what is going to define you is your educative process mm -hmm. of learning truly who you are outside of school. When I used to teach at the community college, I used to tell students, your education starts when these school doors close. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your education starts when these school doors close. It wasn't until 2018, the summer of 2018, that I actually started reading about our history, educating myself. That's how recent it is. I went to Notre Dame a prestigious institution and wasn't getting none of that right so the thing is, is that people can say oh well you know maybe if you just go to one of them ivy leagues you'll get the truth please right. you're gonna get right. more lies mm -hmm. more lies it's more just lies. told by people with more money and then they have the nerve to say oh why do y'all need hbcu why do y'all need that why do y'all need those y'all don't need that we got this no because it's, you know yes. it's, we do need that yeah we need it and we need it badly. We need to keep them, and they're trying to do away with them. Certainly, you know what's interesting is that there is a major shift happening with these historically black colleges and universities, where a fifth of those students now are white. Oh, what? Mm -hmm. Twenty percent yeah. of the HBCU population is white, and so I feel that 
at this point, we as black people have so many resources amongst us. Um, not just economic resources, but occupational resources in terms of different professions, skill sets, entrepreneurial abilities, and things like that, where we can really begin to pull ourselves together as communities, as collectives, and establish our own system of education. Because we, because the reality is that so long as you continue to go into an institution where white people are in charge, where white people are the ones funding these institutions, you will always have to bump up against their system and their ideas of thinking being and behaving in this world mm -hmm. and so we have what it takes and so a lot of the things that I plan on doing is really establishing our own system of education I can't do it on my own before yeah. I before I became a, a full-time PhD student making $16,000 a year right now I was making nearly 60,000 but guess what I'm living in a place that costs twice as much as where I was making 60,000 but I knew I was called to do this. Mm -hmm. So this is a sacrifice, right. but I take this stuff seriously because I know that the system takes our destruction seriously. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and I just, and right. so I'm here right. in, in, in the black mecca. I don't mm -hmm. care what anybody says, mm -hmm. we still got this. Mm -hmm. If we believe it and we trust it and we have a vision for ourselves, we can rebuild. We can. And I'm here because I know that there's a history here that I can feed off of. There's inspiration that I can I can be fueled from and establish a team of other young folks who want to be out here and establish a new way of thinking about education and bringing it directly to our communities. Absolutely. Yes, that, that, that would be amazing. That would be great you know, to, to make something like that happen. Well, we most definitely have to have it back. Oh, well, I would most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, man, I want you to, uh, okay. yeah, give us, tell us how we can reach you. Okay, so uh, by the way, I just actually got social media for the first time oh, yeah. two months ago in 10 years, but you can find me on Instagram. I don't have any other social media platform at the moment, but you can find me on Instagram at sundrop underscore 369. Um, but my name is Stephanie Wellen, so you can just Google me. You can get my email address from Georgia State's website, but if you want my personal email, it's S C Wellens, W E L L O N S at gmail.com. I answer and I check it on a day to day. I'm, I'm about this work. Mm -hmm. So reach out to me if that's something that you're oh, interested you want, in. We want you to do a piece before you. Yeah, please. All please right. do that. Okay. All right. So, given that we're talking about education and then you know, of course, that was the piece that you were referencing that you felt like was, you know, rel you know very deep in. Mm -hmm. This is the first piece that I did. This one is called American Education. Okay. American education was never for your transformation, but only for your degradation. It was never for your elevation, but only for your decimation. Destroying your mind and distorting your spirit with recurrent systems of misinformation. American education is for your alienation, not unification. For your isolation, not solidification. For your separation, not life cooperation. American education is purpose for your domination, your subordination, your subjugation. It functions for white race European assimilation, Americanization, and violent incorporation. What you mean you go into American education for certification in hopes to increase your qualification? How so when American education is against your creation, your dedication, your motivation, your determination? It is the role of American education to increase your obligation and dedication to a system revolving around white identification. In the game of white incorporation, there is no self-determination, only dictation. No liberation, only limitation. No cooperation, only confrontation. American education is purpose for white race European deification. An enterprise produced and reproduced through colonization. A nation level of imperialization. A global level of white race European world domination. Remember that I told you, American education was never for your transformation. Only for your degradation. Thank you. There you go. So, yes. Appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, we're going to have you back. <laughs> Stop it by. Appreciate it. it. Was very, that was very empowering. Very empowering to just talk to you. Thank you for this opportunity, y'all. Mm -hmm. All right, sir. Thank you. We'll see you again.
Well, I didn't do the spotlight, but I got sent. Spotlight. Okay. This is the new look of Sun Goddess Sense if you haven't seen it yet. I have a new logo. And today I am going to spotlight my sugar scrub. This is my lemon sugar sugar scrub. And it is made with um, just granulated sugar, grapeseed oil, coconut oil, and vitamin E. And then I put, you know, the lemon sugar fragrance in there. And um, it's for exfoliation, so it will get rid of any, you know, your dead, the dead skin that you have on. Like you get in the shower, you wash up, and then you scrub with it. And you will actually, um, you won't have to moisturize when you get out the shower because the grapeseed oil helps with the moisture, moisturize in your body, and the fragrance is gonna stay on you as well. So yes. Wonderful. It's so Have refreshing. I know I'm going to give me some. Yes. Yes. Lemon sugar. Lemon sugar. Mm. It smells like that pound cake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it smells so wonderful. Yes. So, and I can personalize the sugar scrub. So, if you want mango butter, if you want velvet sugar, Dolce & Gabbana light blue, whatever you want, I can create your own personal sugar scrub. Can we find you there? Goddess underscore I'm in set on IG. Shelly I'm in set Harris on Facebook and Facebook like page Sun Goddess Sets. And um, you can catch me at Wadada's Healthy Market and Juice Bar two to three days a week. Alright, so before we get out of here, conversation and why do you want to show you how set is powered by the fitness, media, and the time group. And we used to CEO, Mr. Gabby Booker, at 770-912-3652 for internet, radio, um, podcast. Marketing, marketing, any kind of uh, marketing your business, um, uh, commercials, commercials, web series. Videography, um, photography. Come on any down. Any kind of digital marketing. Yeah, come on okay. down to the Phoenix Media Entertainment Group. And on that note, we signing out, Ken. Peace, Peace and light. out. Peace out.